during college, I had this professor who was an atheist, and he kind of shook me a little bit because, number one, we studied Dostoevsky, and number two, he talked about how in the Bible, Joshua stops the sun. And from a science perspective, you can't stop the sun. At that point in my life, I still thought the Bible was perfect. Sure, I thought that people had messed up little things, but you can't stop the sun. To make a long story short, I lost my faith. And I stopped being a Christian. And it was really hard. And I'm sure for a lot of people, what I said yesterday kind of shook them a little bit because they were like, yeah, Jesus couldn't come back. I mean, what's he going to do? Is he going to go walk through a wall and show up to the Pope and be like, hello, Pope? Which, by the way, is an Antichrist. Here's the thing about Antichrists. Um, You aren't the Antichrist. Why? Because there's no such thing. It's a metaphor. What is an Antichrist? An Antichrist is someone that keeps you from, that is against you being saved. It is against your Savior. And what is your Savior? An idea that we need to fix the planet. An idea that we need to save ourselves from ourselves yeah I'm that cool just in case you were wondering it's actually my mom's mug but she likes royal people personally I don't give a shit about royalty but I'm sure I'll if I ever meet some royal people I'll think it's really cool that you guys have crowns and stuff But I personally like crowns. That's one of our symbols. Um, Anyways, according to Ecclesiastes, the quiet words of the wise are more to be heeded than the shouting of a ruler among fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one bungler destroys much good. If I keep talking, I'm going to dilute what I said yesterday. But I wanted to come back today and talk to you because I know what it's like to lose your faith and I know how hard it is and I'm sure that for a lot of people um, it was very difficult hearing what I said yesterday Um, but I want you to know number one just because the Bible isn't a perfect thing. And just because the Bible um, talks about a God that I don't believe exists, maybe yeah, God doesn't exist. Why? What really convinced me to switch from agnostic to atheist? They asked me, or they told me, they said, If God existed, he or she would never let us do what we do. And what do we do? We create religions that deceive the world. We lie to people to trick them into doing what we want them to do. We control the events of the world. Here's the thing. According to Proverbs 16 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. You know what the real reason the entire world or a huge percentage of the world is going to die sooner than um, they had to? Pride. 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 It's not wickedness. It's not because 
you guys are fornicators, you guys are murderers, you guys do absolutely terrible things to one another. You guys do very, very, very evil shit. That's not true. The Illuminati does evil shit. Dude, we're not the ones stuffing people in factories and turning them into slaves. We're not the ones, like, with children digging in the dirt at gunpoint in Africa. But you're the ones that benefit from it. So do you. So do a lot of us. Um, I have a chance to upgrade my iPhone. I didn't do it. Why? Why didn't I upgrade my iPhone? For those of you that don't know, in the United States, after two years, you get really good deals on your iPhone if you've had a phone for a long time. So there's like an upgrade period. Well, I've had my phone for a long time. It's an iPhone SE. And I chose not to upgrade it. Why? Because I know that inside that little phone are these little tiny parts and these little tiny raw materials go into your phone. And where do they come from? A lot of them come from the Congo. A lot of them come from parts of Africa where really, really bad things happen. And the way that I get my phone is by getting little pieces from slaves that are treated terribly. So, um, even if I'm an atheist who has a really, 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 really cool mug, which by the way, um, whoever edited this photo, I don't know why you did such a thick white filter on it because Meghan Markle doesn't look natural in it. I don't think that you should like try to be something you're not and try to make someone you're something you're not. And there's nothing there. There's like nothing that's not beautiful about her except for maybe her dress selection. And I don't really like his suit selection either, but okay. Anyways, well, you just insulted your wedding photograph. I don't think you guys have that good. I mean, I don't think that's a, it's not my style. Anyways, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The whole point I'm trying to make right now is just because the whole thing isn't true doesn't mean this thing isn't full of gems. And I'm telling you, I have reread this Bible <laughs> so many times and I'm never going to stop reading it. Um, so... I don't think that if you're a Christian and you love the Bible, you should stop loving the Bible. Um, but I think the real point I was trying to make in the beginning was you are you can be an atheist and be way more moral than Christians. It's kind of like in the movie I Heart Huckabees where um, Mark Wahlberg is like, we could all... We could all um, like he, he's, he's like going off on these Christians about how like they're wasting petroleum. Like you have a huge SUV, like blah, blah. And he's like, we'd all save the world if we, if we cared about petroleum. Like, it doesn't matter if you are going around talking about God. Like if you don't care about petroleum, he's trying to like yell and he, and he looks crazy and he's running around on a bicycle. And in the Christian's mind, it's like, well, he's the bad guy. But really, Mark Zucker or Mark Wahlberg is the one that's going around trying to help people, and he's trying to save the planet, and he's he's actually a firefighter. He's actually a good guy. Um, but then everyone that's a Christian thinks that he's not good um, because their priorities are screwed up. The wise lay up knowledge, but the babbling of a fool brings ruin near. I'm going to stop talking now. But I just want to let you know, you can still be happy without belief in Christianity. And you don't have to be bitter towards them. Because if there's anybody who's been bitter towards Christians, at least for a couple years after I stopped believing in God, or stopped believing in Jesus, it was me. And then I suddenly hit a point where I was like, these people care about me and that's why they want me to be a Christian. That's why they don't agree with me because they're afraid I'm going to go to hell. And I realized that when they were trying to convert me back, they weren't trying to hurt me. They were trying to save me. They cared about me. Um, so just because 
someone's a Christian and they don't agree with you and they can't, you can't get into their head, uh, that, um, it's kind of silly, uh, doesn't mean that you should be bitter towards them. Like you should have compassion on them. My only concern is when you're a Christian and you believe that God's going to take care of everything for you. So you think you don't have to do anything yourself. That's not how it works. Because I see a bunch of atheists that are out there cleaning up the ocean and eating vegan and not using plastic and riding bicycles. And then I see a bunch of Christians that are like, God gave me oil. Good for you. Um, God gave me the power to save the planet by pressing a button or God gave me the power to stop a computer program from destroying a huge or from killing a huge amount of people um, but I'm not going to use it because what's the point there are too many of you that don't care I'm going to stop don't want to turn into a babbling fool um, but I know what it's like to lose your faith and um, I know how brutal it is because dude when you're a Christian like there's a verse in the Bible um, pray without ceasing pray continuously and they, it's the shortest verse in the Bible but it's the most important one because the Bible was written with numbers on it so everyone's like it had, it's the shortest verse, so it must be significant. <laughs> okay, well, uh, it wasn't written as a freaking uh, numbered text. It was written as a letter. Uh, um, well, not all of them were written as letters, but a lot of them were written as letters. Um, and, but, the, but still, so that my point is that's why people put significance to it. But still, um, this whole idea of praying without ceasing, um, this whole idea of having this like. I used to talk about um, seeing the world through the divine filter, like where you're like seeing the world like through like the, like this like God's perspective, or like where you're trying to see God in everything, where you're trying to seek God in everything, where everything you do has this God element to it. And if your entire life revolves around God, and then suddenly you don't have God, it's like, what am I supposed to do? Um, well, what you do is you love one another and you end up seeing God or um, the good or uh, you end up feeling some element of happiness by bringing happiness into other people's lives, by being kind, by helping others. I don't think that losing your faith should mean losing your generosity. Um I mean, last Christmas I gave a hundred bucks to a busboy and I'm a poor dude. Like I was making pretty sure $15 an hour at that point. If that working part time, which is not, which is actually a decent amount of money if you live with your parents. But if, if you don't live with your parents, it's not very much. And I still gave him money. And I'm telling you the best thing I did all last year was giving a guy a hundred bucks. You know, I didn't even stay around for him to, him to thank me. I just said, I put it down and I said, I looked at him and I said, they, they walked away because I didn't want him to thank me. But like, it was just the feeling of knowing that I did something good. So should losing your faith mean losing your kindness and your generosity and your love? F no. You should love just as passionately or more passionately because it makes you happy and it makes other people happy. And I'm telling you, happiness is contagious. You can spread it. You know what else is contagious? Sadness. And I can feel it sometimes because I'm telling you, I've caused so much stress in the world and it hurts. But I also think what matters more than happiness is survival. And if I have to be sad for a couple years, which I'm not actually completely sad right now, I'm, I'm more frustrated um, then it's worth it because survival matters more. Um, even if I had to be sad for the rest of my life, survival of my people matters more than anything.
congratulations, President Obrador, the new president of Mexico. He is uh, very far left, and I hope he's careful because I will talk about the dangers of capitalism all day long, and I have seen the Motorcycle Diaries, and I actually love Che Guevara, which is really weird for an American to say that they love Che Guevara, especially if you're not a communist. Uh, but I also believe you can be extreme right, pure, pure, pure uh, free market capitalist, and be freaking stupid. Like, you can be crazy as a free market capitalist. That's dumb. And you can be far left. And you can be so left that you are dangerous for your country. Um, but if you find middle ground, then that's better. Um, it can be a very, 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 very damaging thing to be that far left. Especially in this world. I'm giving Obrador the benefit of the doubt. I've known he was going to be president for a little while now. Um, and um, here's his shot. So I hope you use your power for good. I think he's going to try.